What's going on my PT peeps? I'm a Walking Dead family. Welcome to the PT channel. I'm One Eye Bri, back to talk about The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 5. Obviously, spoiler warning for Season 9, Episode 5, but also Season 9 as a whole. I don't know what you know, what you don't want to know, and I don't want to ruin anything for you. We'll talk a little bit about Episode 906 and what might happen later this season, but Season 9, Episode 5 was yesterday. Sunday, November 4th. And what did you think of it, guys? Did you catch these things? As always, let me know your thoughts. If I missed anything, post your comments below. And hopefully you're already a member of our Walking Dead family here at the PT channel. But if you're not, please hit that subscribe button, become a valued member of the PT channel, and photo credit, info credit to these fine folks right here, just giving credit where credit is due. Well, episode 905 was Rick Grimes' last episode. Was it? Is it? Well, yes, technically, Rick Grimes will not be on the Walking Dead TV show anymore, is what Scott Gimple said on Talking Dead, but Rick Grimes will be in movies. I think the word is three movies right now. Small movies, longer segments, big things, but AMC original films, probably on AMC Premiere Service and AMC's television network. So Ricky Grimes will still be part of the Walking Dead universe, just not the TV show as of yet, but hopefully he'll come back. Well, let's talk about some things you may have missed. Obviously the door right here, it says, don't open dead outside with don't crossed out. It's a remix of the first door that we saw in the pilot episode, don't open dead inside. Rick opens the door and we see all these dead bodies. It's a hallucination, of course, but you can clearly see Carol and Jesus right there. Maybe that's Carl and it's a bunch of people. It's really everybody Rick has met. But is it foreshadowing for Jesus and Carol? I think possibly Jesus, but I doubt Carol's going to die. And 905 was connected with the pilot episode in some major, major ways. And I love that about it. And that was one of my favorite parts of the episode besides badass Judy Grimes. And basically Rick Grimes was alone at the start of The Walking Dead and his exit, he was alone as well. Yes, he met Morgan and Dwayne, but then he met Jadis. So there is little connections there. And of course, Shane was a big part of there. But Rick on the horse, Rick on the horse, fell off in Atlanta, fell off on the rebar. That was episode 904, but the connecting there, it was also in the intro. Little Easter eggs, big Easter eggs, major spoilers, little spoilers in the intro. Pretty interesting. Rick going back to Atlanta and hallucinating talking to Shane was another big part of the episode that I loved. Shane coming back and joking about Judith, his ears, his nose, him being an asshole, him wanting Rick to become an asshole, you know, just doing what needs to be done was a nice touching moment. Whether you like Shane or not, I thought it was pretty cool. And also the jump scare when he was like, ah, when he was Shane that transformed into the walker. That was pretty cool. We haven't had a scary moment or a jump scare on The Walking Dead for a long time. Herschel Green coming back was a touching moment that probably every fan was like, oh, Herschel. Especially with the news about Scott Wilson, but I love their interaction. It was very short, very touching, but I like the idea of Rick and Herschel coming back together, Shane and Herschel, and I like the Sasha connection as well. But I see a possible connection with The Wizard of Oz. They are reading the book, Shane's Courage, Herschel's heart, little connection with the Wizard of Oz there. I like that idea too. Andrew Lincoln said that in the interview with Yvette Nicole Brown on Talking Dead. So I see a possible connection there with the Wizard of Oz and the show. And the fact that they were reading the book to Judith, pretty interesting. And I love when the show does that. But Rick survived. And they're keeping Rick Grimes alive for future stories. Pretty cool. That scene right there takes me back to Daryl when he got hurt in season two. And he had the arrow in him and he's laying there by the water. That just takes me back to that picture. With good old boy Merle. Ah, I miss Merle a little bit. Jadis saves Rick like Rick saved Jadis. Pretty interesting, but Jadis marked Rick as an A and then changed him to a B. Rick was bloody and almost dying, but that doesn't make him a follower. Alpha, beta, leader, follower, alive, bitten. What does it actually mean? We're gonna find out hopefully in the movies, the Walking Dead original movies, but you can see the shot right there with the nasal cannula and the oxygen going in the nose and Rick still being out of it. And there just takes me back to the pilot episode, Rick being there. We've seen that a couple times in the episode. So you saw a clear connection from episode 101 to 905. That is Heath's RV. Heath and Tara from season seven that they got from the satellite outpost from the saviors. That was confirmed to be the same RV. Still no word of Heath, still no connection there. Was Heath traded? That would be pretty interesting if we see Heath in the movies. We could potentially see that. When Rick goes to the shack, you see Rick there having a hallucination with Shane and he passes out. But on the way to the shack, to the house, whatever you're calling this, you see a mailbox. 
and you see Cardill, Cardow, however you want to say the last name. But to me, it's two clear connections from Night of the Living Dead that was set on the Talking Dead, but also Day of the Dead as Laurie Cardow's last name. I see Cardow, it could be Cardill, but this is a confirmed Easter egg. Now let's talk about Little Ass Kicker and hopefully future badass Judith Grimes. Well, I have to ask this. Why is she by herself in the woods? Sure, she could be a badass. She has Rick's gun. She has a katana. She doesn't have a shotgun, so the spoilers were wrong about that. So that's all right, but I still like the idea that she has Rick's gun and she has a new katana for herself. She was clearly being taught by Michonne here was what they were showing us. Michonne teaching her skills how to defend herself. And yes, she's probably a badass character, but she's probably 10 years old. She has Carl's hat. Not really liking the idea that she was by herself, but you can see the katana, Rick's gun, and Carl's hat. Also, can she fire that revolver without a problem? She had pretty good aim when she saved Magna, but you know, it's a little much for a 10 year old, but this is a zombie apocalypse and a fantasy show, so I guess she can. Also, I see a possible connection with the Lori shirt. Is it a callback? Is it Lori's shirt? I don't think so, but it could be a connection with Lori to Judith, and I like that. Magna's group was saved by Judith. Judith Grimes, not Jesus like in the comic, which is very telling, at least for me. Magnus Group debuts in issue 127, and season 9 has jumped around a lot. They talked about something in issue 174 that we'll talk about in a second. Issue 127 was in episode 906. They hanged Gregory that was in a later issue, so it's all over the place. If you know the comics, you know the transport back there. The shipping container, the horses, the umbrella, the stuff on top. That was seen in the introduction issue of Magna, and you could have missed it, but you see the shipping container that they're standing on right there. They were surrounded by walkers. It was a nice comic connection that you may have missed. Another connection was Maggie and Negan. Like I said, issue 174 is where Maggie confronts Negan, which is a long way away from issue 127. But I also heard that this is Maggie's last episode too. Episode 905 was Maggie's last episode that we won't see her again. Have to wait and see if that's true, but that kind of sucks. Negan and Maggie's interaction was pretty interesting. Maggie did not kill Negan like in the comics, but if you wanted to die, Negan, just attack Maggie. She probably would have killed you to defend herself and protect herself. But Negan's still alive and he'll be a part of the show going forward. And with all the hallucinations with Rick and this and that, we didn't know what to believe. What was real, what was not real. One of the best scenes here was not real. It was a hallucination, which kind of sucks. And another sad moment was when Daryl saw the explosion on the bridge and he thought Rick died and he just teared up. And I was about to tear up a little bit, but then I knew Rick was going to survive. So I was like, all right, Rick's going to be okay. But the fact that this awesome scene was just a hallucination kind of sucks. And also the goodbye that we never really had because this was a hallucination as well is very sad. And I think the fact that Rick is gone is going to change Michonne more than anybody. It's going to hurt Daryl. It's going to hurt Michonne. It's going to hurt Judith and Carol and everybody. But Michonne is definitely going to feel it the most. And I think she's going to be forever changed by this and probably a lot colder. Rick was bleeding there on the bridge. I just don't know how he wasn't surrounded by walkers because he was playing there probably for a couple seconds at least, but Rick did not get killed by Daryl. And remember all those theories and that one video that probably got millions of views because somebody was like, we saw it in there. We saw this. Daryl's going to kill Rick. Didn't happen. Thank goodness. Rick did it himself. He blew up the dynamite, which I don't know what happened. If you shot dynamite with a bullet, would it actually blow up? You know, let me know about that. But also Jed, AKA Mud is still alive potentially. We saw the guy next to him with the blade and the black gloves on. He was dead, I guess, because we saw three dead people from the camp. He was one of them. The girl on the horse back there was another one and we saw a kingdomer that were dead. Rick shot them to get away and the camp was deserted. There was nobody there, which I don't know what happened there. Hopefully we're gonna see what happens in a flashback or something because I wanna know. But I'm really glad that Daryl did not kill Rick and Daryl actually saved Rick. He was shooting the walkers and killing the walkers that were trying to get to Rick. I love that. That was one of my favorite scenes of the episode. And, you know, it was just sad that Rick's gone. During the Talking Dead and the interview, Andrew Lincoln was talking with Yvette Nicole Brown. And there was a big thing about Norman Reedus tickling Rick's feet. Well, Andrew Lincoln's feet during the filming. And it was probably this scene because that was the last scene 
that they filmed is what Andrew Lincoln said. And it would make sense that he had to giggle there too because he kind of giggled and said, wake up, asshole. And the other thing when they kept saying, what's your wound? I heard Morgan, I heard Abraham, and I believe I heard Lori. I don't know if there was three or more of those, but let me know who you actually heard because a lot of people are asking me who was it besides Morgan. That was obvious. At the very end of the episode, well, towards the end of the episode with Rick, you saw the chopper fly away and you heard a song play and it's called Space Junk by Wang Chung. Great name, Space Junk and Wang Chung. But it was the same song I heard it immediately from the pilot episode at the very end of that when Rick was surrounded in the tank and it was playing and it's the same exact song that they use there. So a clear connection from episode 101 and episode 905. So again, it was Space Junk by Wang Chung. Pretty cool stuff. And I have to comment, I love Michonne and I feel bad for Michonne. And if you saw the sneak peek of the next three episodes, cause we got three more episodes before the break and then we have eight more episodes, but Michonne's got a different haircut. She looks pretty different. What do you think of this? Badass, weird, sexy, terrible. I think it's pretty cool. It's got to grow on me a little bit because we're so used to seeing her with the other hairstyle, but I'm excited to see what's in store for Michonne and the rest of the survivors. But did you catch these things, guys? Did I miss anything? Like I said, post your comments below. And I have to say, I feel weird about this episode. I feel like they did a good job connecting Rick's journey from episode 101 to episode 905 and all the way in between and with the Herschel, Shane, and Saucer thing. But I just feel like... I don't know, like tricked by AMC. It was his last episode, but wait, he's gonna come back. Three movies, he's gonna be in movies, not episodes, so they gotcha, aha. So we'll see what they're gonna do, but I'm excited that the continuation of The Walking Dead and movies and spinoffs and all that good stuff. But if you love The Walking Dead, I don't want you to miss out. Please hit that subscribe button and become a valued member of the PT channel and our Walking Dead family. And remember guys, with hard work, dedication, belief, and sacrifice, you can truly achieve your goals. Believe in yourself, you can do it.